Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience, contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to Pods of the Multiverse Season 2. We are an unofficial Dungeons & Dragons podcast. We play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Scala. I will be portraying the world of Ravnica, and with me are my dear friends playing the characters, navigating that world. My name is Jeppy, and I play Illipel, the world's most renowned courier. That was a weird way to say that, but okay. I am renowned. I am renowned no, by... No, I just met... Never mind. Oh, who's next to me? Uh, I'm Jimmy, and I play Clork, who is certified in all manner of home repair. <laughs> Doors, windows, whatever you need done. <laughs> even like a shop shelf. Even if you don't have a home and you have a shop, you can repair your one shelf. <laughs> you need anything mended, I'm your guy. Uh, and I'm Andy. I play Alwyn, friend to beast and watcher of said windows. Window watcher. He's friend. Everything watcher, though, let's be real. <laughs> yeah, over both shoulders. Just quick before we get into things. Friendly reminder that if you like our content, the most helpful thing you can do for us is give us engagement, rate us and review us, and pass us along to all your friends. And if you don't like our content, pass it along to all your enemies. You know how it goes. We like your enemies. Sorry. We do. We do like your enemies. Your enemies like our podcast. Sorry. They're not our enemies. It's as simple as that. (laughs) It's as simple as that. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. Okay. Time for the weekly recap quiz show where uh, the game was last week and the points don't matter. And the points might actually matter. We are extremely hurt. How can you fucking joke about this? (laughs) I'm actually not doing too bad, but whatever. I'm in an okay spot. Okay, recap show. Last week, to put it into a sentence, we just kind of ran around and did shit that we maybe didn't need to do, but we did it anyway. We harassed three people. We harassed three people, basically. And two of them definitely barely mattered. But we had some fun. We did some silly stuff. We saved a person from... It was like an elephant creature thing. It has, like, the body of an elephant, but, like, the head of a giraffe. Oh, okay. Okay. An Indra, yes. Yeah, they got those down here in Florida. (laughs) So we saved one of the people from that, and then that didn't do anything good for us. Then we went and saved a courier from a spider, and then we did some resting at an inn. We went back to Zonot 7. Then we went back to Zonot 7. And then we did a great job. We did some breaking and entering. <laughs> yeah, we did some very <laughs> non-suspicious B and E involving door repairsmanship, which was great. And then we got into a fight with some assassins that tried to kill us and not the person we were seeking, who was uh, Cassiel. Cl- uh, Cassiel Abstani. I think I got a couple points though. I, I think you do have three points right now for the things that you got correct. I mean, Jeppy did just kind of. Yeah, Talk Jeppy, and Jeppy not did let all of anybody, it. And not let anybody say anything else. Good. Yeah. I, that's great because. That's a good way to win the quiz show, yeah, I guess. It is. It's kind of like right. his character, honestly. <laughs> that's right, yeah. yeah. It's a good thing the points don't matter. Yeah. It is. Indubitably. Alwyn is still very upset at this ambush. <laughs> You're about to interrogate the fairy that you have captured after breaking into Cassiel's apartment somewhat less subtly than you may have initially planned. Clark magically opened the locked door, at which point a bewildered elven mutant walked out and then... And let him in. No, let myself in. Yeah, he did. He had, like, a huge knocker and he, like, smashed the door and it broke the door, but the person let him in. And then I came in later to say that it was uh, door repair day. It did not break the door. It didn't? That is not how the device works. No, it unlocked the door. You let yourself in. I let myself in, and then I let Semantics. Illipel in. And then yes. let Illipel in, at which point this farce sort of continued until you decided to cast spells on him. <laughs> so, so dumb. Nailed it. The guild pack sending its top lieutenants <laughs> to go do its dirty work. We've got our, our best people on the job. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever they can find that day. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I am going to point out, since some of you are somewhat hurt, that Alwyn's healing spirit has, I think, like three more charges before it expires. Only used it once. Yep. And you have a fairy captive that Alwyn has bound with vines. Do you want me to roll on that? Because that's just a cantrip. You're tying up a unconscious prisoner. There's no check required. 
Yeah, you are in these lower layers of Zonoth 7, this great sinkhole that descends down, down to the underground seas of Ravnica. You're sort of in a small, almost a studio apartment where this person is living. Actually, Cassio will close the door behind them and lock it again. What is going on? We're about to get to the bottom of it. First thing Alwyn does, seeing how hurt Clork is, is direct his healing spirit, which is still up, over to Clork. And Clork, you are going to heal some hit points off of that. You heal six. Thanks, pal. Okay, it's one plus spellcasting mod. So five, four, I still have three for it. I was hurt. I'm going to take one. I heal four. I'll give another one to Clork. Clork, you heal another six. I'll save the last one, because it lasts a minute. Illipel will turn to the fairy creature and... They're still unconscious, right? Oh, they are. Illipel will slap the fairy creature in the face. I want to kind of catch Illipel before they do this. I just kind of hold my hand out. Are you prepared to interrogate this assassin? Do you know what you're going to say, what you're going to ask? And I don't mean talking in circles. Always. Very well. I'll use the last healing spirit charge on the fairy. Okay. Fairy heals two. The fairy comes back to consciousness. What's your spell, DC? Just like my regular ass spell save? Yeah. 14. That seems like a reasonable enough way to set this. They struggle at the bonds, but are not very strong. The entire time I have both my weapons still shillelied, I am still in my fungal entity. I am watching this thing like a hawk. It takes stock of its situation and does not say anything. Illipel will lean into this creature, like getting quite close. I'll keep this very simple. What are you doing here? A wide, wicked, maniacal grin spreads across the fairy's face. A night veil is darkness. A night veil is silence. Oh, that is quite helpful. Thank you. Can I make any kind of check on that? History or something? Insight, I would say? Yeah, I'll do the same. 14. Dirty 20. Illipel, you especially would recognize that these Demir operatives, as the name Night Vale suggests, have been trained somewhat to resist interrogation, and this mantra is probably something they use to do that. I just stare daggers at Illipel like, can you be a little more convincing? While I understand your allegiance is to House Demir, and do not seek to create a rift between you and your guild, I think it would most behoove you to speak to us plainly, outside of these riddles. Again, without obfuscation or any sort of trickery, I understand that the words you speak are meant to steady you and keep you firm against the adversity that you perceive us to be. But the reality is, we are here on behalf of all guilds, as part of the Guild Pact. I suspect some sort of ill tiding sits beneath that grin of yours, and I'd be most grateful if you'd be willing to share why. Plainly, the Night Vale is silence. Gotta respect that. Do I? I don't think they're gonna talk to us. Well, you can stay bound to your darkness and silence, but I would be, again, most grateful if you would be willing to comply independently. Though if not, I may simply have to suggest that you speak to me outside of these riddles. All right. I'm guessing a nine... Bye-bye, motherfucker. ...is not going to beat your spell (laughs) saves. It is not going to, so talk to me. Nice. (laughs) What would you know? Everything. But in particular, why us? And by whom were you sent? Vinzola directed us to protect the asset. No one must know they are compromised. Seeing that this fairy is starting to give to Illipel, can I turn my intention to trying to peek outside? Yeah, go ahead and roll perception. Okay. 22. 22. That's a good roll. But not good enough. No, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything to see at this point. Not right now, but it might come up later. Okay. Clark takes out his notepad. Can I get that name again? Vinzola. Vinzola. And you mentioned Cassiel being compromised. What of this? I know what I need to know. The asset. It's referring to us, Illipel. I would rather the fairy speak on behalf of Vinzola, if it's all the same to you. I give a sort of apologetic nod while going back to look out the window. They are Vinzola's asset within the Guardian Project. That is all I know. That is all I need to know. What kind of asset in particular? I forget. Ask it where we can find Vinzola. I'll, I'll get to it. Steady yourself. Surely a creature as adept as you doesn't just forget critical information about a target of interest. I remember what I am required to remember. 
And I forget everything that is unnecessary. The Night Vale is darkness. It is darkness indeed, but it is not silence at this moment. Who exactly is Vinzola? Holy shit, suggestion lasts eight hours, you guys. I got all day. Vinzola is my master. Does your master do anything other than enslave you? I'm not a slave. I serve Vinzola, for he is powerful. To what end does Vinzola use this power? What forms does this power take? Thirst. I drink plenty. I'm not all that powerful. <laughs> Vinzola has a thirst for thoughts. To what end? All information has value. <sighs> I cannot deny the truth in that. Very well. To the point. Where is this Vinzola? I don't remember. Yeah, that does not seem to be very critical information. I would imagine it's worth forgetting. Where do you report back to Vinzola? It changes. Where were you going after you were meant to kill us? We would have gotten instructions in the library. From whom or what? Dead drops. Very well. We'd be happy to come with you. Take us along, please. So remind me exactly what the wording of your suggestion was. I believe it was I suggest you talk to us. I think it was, yeah. Mm. No, I will not lead you anywhere. The Night Vale is darkness. The Night Vale is silence. Very well, very well. Fair, fair, fair. Tell us exactly where this drop-off is, and when. The necessary information is encoded in the library. There are references. It's a cipher. Illipel looks to this fairy like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I give a glance down to Clork as I'm watching back and forth between outside and inside. Yeah? What? You have any sort of history dealing with codes, Master Goblin? Eh, uh, not really, but I might know a guy. We shouldn't stay here. Cassiel speaks up. I don't know if it would be safe to just head out into the city. There may be other agents lying in wait. I asked the fairy. Are there other agents lying in wait for us? Nice. It's my golden ticket, baby. I'm going to keep punching that card <laughs> as much as I can. I don't remember. Jesus fucking... Vinzola knows. Vinzola knows. Ah, you are a very useful underling. If this doesn't work out, I may have work for you. The longer we stay here, the more danger we're in. We have to find friends, and we have to find them now. I don't know if you'll make it that far. You should recover your strength here. I have plenty of faith in my friends. I think Alwyn makes an astute observation. That being said, perhaps we can afford a short rest. Very well. I suggest we know where we're going as soon as we're done. I'll keep a lookout. It's a better predicament than we've been in before. What with this information from our new friend here, gesturing to the fairy, and the fact that we've now overcome several other scraps in our time together. I think we shall fare very well. And I'll cast Song of Rest, and then the additional healing for those who use their hit dice is four. And you have to use the hit dice? You have to use the hit dice. But yeah. And I'm at full. I am also at full. I'm at 24 out of 26. I look back down at the ferry after Illipel says this, and I just say, Don't worry, Illipel. You'll be able to talk to him all you like. We're taking him with us. Ah, what a lovely idea. Always great to have new company to speak with. And while we're taking the short rest, if you'll allow me, I just continue this cantrip and bind this ferry as best I can to carry under my arm when we're ready to go. Carry the ferry. Yeah, sure. Did we try and see if there was anything we could take off of the bodies or even this one? I don't remember if we did that or not. All the weapons would be too small for you. They're fairy size, but you could take them. Mm. They have... Uh, crossbows, and what would be a longsword for a fairy is barely a dagger for a medium-sized creature. <laughs> Look at this tiny crossbow. Look at me with this tiny crossbow. <sighs> ah, very, very nice cloak. Very nice. They may be worth something. You know where to sell something like this? Maybe I do. Well, that's your business. Would they be worth anything? Um, if there's anyone who could find a place to sell this, it'd probably be someone like you, Alwyn. Okay. You are... Well adept at repurposing all sorts of discarded items. Oy. So, having taken your short rest, uh, where are you guys going to attempt to go? Way I see it, we've got two choices. Down into the Undercity, or up to Nivix. Up or down? I know where I'd go. Well, you were our leader. What say you? Nivix is one of the safest places in the 10th District. Don't goblins die there regularly? Aren't things always exploding there? Well, yeah, but that wouldn't affect us. <laughs> As long as we can get to Rel, that may be our best option. Get the who? <sighs> Randy. <laughs> I kind of want to knock the fairy back out. Okay. Because I don't want anything fucking dumb to happen while, we, while we're while we carrying them. Okay. 
They're bound. You can do what you want. I do. I non-lethally knock them back out. Okay. And I hoist them under my arm, cloak down, out the door first. All right, you head out the door. You had like a 21, 22 perception? If I see something, I'm not going to go out, obviously. (laughs) This might not be immediately visible from the window, but as your group steps out, Alwyn, you sort of notice this cloud of smoke moving through the air, coiling down into the sinkhole. How far away? It's about 80 feet right now. Oh my god, that's so close. Okay, I hold everybody back at the door with an arm and say, Something's coming. We either have to run or stay here and fight. Clark is going to look for what kind of machinery is making this plume of smoke. You don't see any machinery. It seems to be an autonomous cloud of smoke coming down closer And as it reaches your level, it materializes into the form of a pale, blue-skinned man. This great billowing cloak hangs off of his shoulders. It's embossed with a gold trim depicting short blades in an antiquated style. From beneath the folds of his cloak, you can see him stretching his bony, clawed hand. And under his white, glowing eyes, he smiles and bears a wicked pair of sharp Canines, and he speaks. Ire uru sotoque, hamwarea tamin nerte, entulmarda a angaraxa. He speaks a bunch of words in Elven that make no sense together. I mean, that's obviously like he's casting a spell or something, right? No, he, it doesn't appear like he's casting a spell. Um, Vinzola, I take it. This vampire smiles at you. I underestimated you. Come, follow me, if you would. And again, he turns back into a cloud of black smoke and begins floating up the sinkhole. I mean, I for one don't intend on following this vampire. What do you guys think? Once again, Cloak... Your deduction is excellent. We have to get out of here now. Follow me, if you would, Cassiel says behind you, and you see them as they sort of scamper up the side of the sinkhole, climbing towards the surface, following the cloud. If I see them try to move, I'm going to try and grapple them. Okay, go ahead. Dirty 20. They got a 16 plus 7. Jesus. They're very dexterous. They nimbly avoid your attempt to grab them and begin scampering up the side of the wall. It's a slippery bastard. We can't let him get away. I'm going to cast... Oh, fuck. This guy is immune to spells. Damn it. I'm going to chase him. From here, I would like to transition into a bit of a skill-involved chase scene where you pursue these two through the city. Each round of the chase, everyone describe the skill you're using to pursue, and I will average your scores. How many successes or failures you get determines how well the chase goes. The first leg of this chase is through lower Zonot 7. How do you guys pursue? Alan, can't you climb walls? Aye. Guess you'll solve that matters. So I would like to wild shape into a giant wolf spider. All right, cool and give chase up the wall toward Cassie. As I wild shape, the fairy begins falling, and I catch it into the webbing, spin in, wrap it up very quickly, and have it on my back as I am climbing up the wall as fast as I can. Fantastic. Uh, Go ahead and roll me an athletics check at advantage. This wouldn't be acrobatics. I feel like athletics is more important here. There aren't a ton of obstacles to avoid. It's more about the sheer speed at which you can pursue. That's a 17. That's great. Who's next? Is your hand up, Jeppy? Not for a reason. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't suppose I can talk my way up this wall. I start looking for stairs or a ladder. I do the same. Okay, so trying to look for the most efficient way up, I'm going to call that perception or investigation. Here's investigation. 19. 21. Ha. Wow. Very good. You all keep pace as... Cassiel and the cloud that is Vinzola rise out of this sinkhole. You make it to the upper level of Zonot 7 where there's a bit more traffic around, strange mutants milling about, doctors and other scientists. The waterfalls are very loud now and you 
are still following close behind as you pursue Cassiel and Benzola through the streets. Continuing as a spider, I want to try and use stealth, because I see here that the spider is quite good at stealth, Mm -hmm. to try and see if I can either hide from chasing these two while finding any kind of shortcuts or dark passageways that I can sneak through and wind up a lot closer, perhaps, than some sort of more obvious path along these walls or buildings. Yeah, that sounds good. Roll stealth. 25. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to succeed, but it is a big number. Clark or Elipel? So I'll start yelling and pointing at Cassio. That person stole my mother's purse. Please help me. I'll start shouting that repeatedly and pointing at Cassio in the hopes that like there are some good Samaritans nearby yeah. willing to lend a hand. Cool. Go ahead and roll deception on that. I mean, it's a minimum of a 19, but I'll roll it anyway. Okay. All right. 27. Very nice. There it is. Everyone in Ravnica believes you. Yeah, you, you shout this out. Oh, stop the thief. Stop the thief. Some people attempt to get in the way of Cassiel as they flee. It somewhat impedes their more likely path as they're forced down suboptimal routes. Cool. Can I use maybe an uh, investigation to try to figure out where they're going, what direction they're heading generally? Yeah, investigation's fine. Oop, it's an at one. Oh no. Total of four. All right. Well, I think with the 25 and 27, the average of this round will still clear the DC. It was one of those ones where the die didn't even roll either. It, like, just kind of... It just bop. <laughs> it just plopped. <laughs> it actually slid. Like, it, it landed on one and slid with oh the one God. facing up. <laughs> Devastating. <laughs> that dice hates you. Devastating. Yeah. yeah, with an average of 19, you guys still managed to keep your quarries from getting too much distance on you. Vinzola actually retaking sort of corporeal form as you gain upon him, and they run towards the campus of the Prism University. You chase them down this broad pedestrian boulevard. It's covered in gently bubbling fountains and orderly gardens where students are sort of sitting, reading tomes or practicing cantrips. And this is the sort of avenue you're now giving chase down. Okay, I guess back to me. I will... Okay. Hmm. Seeing that I am at least keeping up or maybe even getting a bit closer as my giant wolf spider form, I would like to try and shoot some webbing to either slow down or pin, or trip, or whatever I can do in this form to try and impede their movement any further. You've now witnessed a spider doing that in action. Uh, I don't think it's a stretch to say that you can sort of duplicate it in your wild shape. Here we go. Okay. Apparently these rolls are still going to be super hot. That's a nat 20. (laughs) Okay. So 25. Total of 25. All right. Very good. Alwyn manages to sort of shoot a web trap. Cassio gets their foot stuck in it. They take a moment to cut themselves loose and keep going. Illipel and Between that and the suboptimal routing, like how far away of a distance are we at now? What spell or ability are you looking to use? So I'm going to try and steal a rope from someone nearby. I'll try to investigate to see if one exists. Okay. And I just want to try and lasso this fucker. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) You don't have a rope? I don't think I do. No, I don't, actually. Yeah, which starting pack did you go with? Diplomat. Mm. Like, it's a bunch of college kids around here. None of them are really carrying ropes on them. Clark would have rope. But if you wanted to take Clark's rope... In that case, actually, what I'll do is I'm just going to investigate, like, what things they have that may be of use to me. And then I'll try to steal from there if I see anything. Random bullshit, go! Roll your investigation, and I'll come up with what you yeah. find. 17. Fucking college kid hat on me? Other than like books. Heck, you a frisbee. A fucking frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> Whack them in the back of the head with a frisbee. Oh, pal, you, you see some of these kids playing with a disc. All right, yeah, I just grabbed that shit. Illipel shows off their fucking glory days with this absolute snatch. Make me an attack roll also to use this disc. Oh, let me check the player's handbook. I don't know if. Bards are proficient in frisbees. Jesus. <laughs> it's a charisma skill. It's probably a performance check. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> it's a fucking... It's a fucking nat 20. <laughs> yes! Oh, my God. I can't believe you've made me do this. <laughs> Describe it for us! Please! 
Paint a picture. Illipel, dapper fop, snaps <laughs> this disc out of the air, in the same motion spins, and hurls it towards the feet of Cassiel. James Pecorelli, you're fucking hard out. Their webbed flipper sticks to the disc, and their speed is somewhat slowed as they are adhered to this object as they run along. Clark, what are you doing? Wow, I really underestimated Illipel, I think. I'm going to try to shoot a spell in a way that perhaps creates an obstruction in front of Cassiel. Sure. Do I see anything that I could hurl a spell at and knock over? There's some statuary. Some of it abstract, weird sculptures that have been commissioned, and some of it probably of noted scholars who studied at the university before. All right, then I'm going to shoot a chaos bolt. That's got a range of 120 feet, so I'm going to hit something in front of Cassiel to knock it down in front of him. Absolutely. All right. So that's an attack roll against a uh, statue. All right. Roll the attack roll. That's going to count as your skill for this round. Fingers How could I possibly crossed. miss that one? Oh, you know what? I'm going to use my... Uh, I'm going to use my advantage die. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a 24. 24. Yes. Oh, and it's a chaos bolt, so let's see what actually <laughs> happens here. That's double sixes. Poison. Okay. So that's going to be 13 poison damage on this statue, and then it'll leap to Cassiel. Okay. Make another attack roll. Ooh. Well, that's only a seven. Okay. So what happens is you shoot this glob of poison at this statue. It bubbles in a toxic manner, eats away at the foundations of it. It topples over in front of Cassiel, who's got a bit of webbing on one foot, a disc stuck to the other. They clamber over it rather comically, and you guys are right on their heels as they enter into the Ismeri Library at the end of this row of buildings. This domed facade that leers down at you with formal columns, marble sphinxes menacingly looking down, a draconic inscription above the archway. You step in, chasing these people. Your nose is filled with the dusty aroma of leather and paper. Beyond the antechamber, the long corridors of bookshelves are dimly illuminated with small hooded lamps and... You are now chasing them through this library. Okay. I'm going to try and stick to the walls kind of up high to try and avoid anybody who might be seeing this chase unfold. And using perception, try and see kind of the entire layout as I can from sort of the highest vantage point as I am continuing to pursue. Right. Go ahead and roll perception. Okay. Yeah, there oh it is. Oh, God. How many fucking nat 20s are you going to get? No, 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 no. That's a five. Oh. oh. <laughs> that's a five plus three. That's an eight. There it is. Yeah. God. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what I was waiting for. All right. Philip, how? I don't want to do it because it feels very disruptive. So I want to talk it out first. How are we feeling as a group about me? Oh, God. <laughs> triggering a domino effect of bookshelves falling down by shoving one. I think that's hilarious. You should absolutely do that. All right, I am going to shove a nearby bookshelf in the hopes that they start to create a domino effect and cut off or collapse on top of Cassio. Okay, roll athletics. Oh, God. Oh, a D12 ain't gonna help. How does a 14 do us? Oh, no. You shove a bookshelf. It does tip into a second bookshelf, but there's not enough force to really get the Shayna Dominoes going. Clark. Oh. Can I help Illipel? Give it a good shove, would you? Minus one. That's also a 14. (laughs) You get it pushed one more, and your group is somewhat distracted as some librarians come. What do you think you're doing? They still whisper. (laughs) <laughs> we can't damage the integrity of the library you gotta whisper <laughs> and in this exchange you lose sight of Cassiel and Vinzola for a moment before you're able to resume your search Alwyn? I wanna try and as quick as I can find Cassiel alright why don't you roll me a survival to pick up their trail it's only gonna be a 13 you do see some shadows moving out of the corner of your eye and you head towards them. Well, this was a dumb idea. Clark is going to try to find a different door to maybe keep them from escaping if they had planned to escape after whatever they were doing here. Similarly, Illipel is going to talk to the librarian that came up. There are two individuals here that we are pursuing. We are here on behalf of the Guild Pact. 
We need your help. Something foul is afoot, and they seek to have it take place in your library. Please secure all the exits. Go ahead and roll persuasion for that. 27 again. And Clark, I think, to find the doors they went through, I'm going to say investigation is fine. It's another nat one. <laughs> no! Hard carried by Illipel. Illipel, they say, I think I did see some strange characters running off that way. This whisper. And they're able to point you in the right direction if you'd like to gather up the rest of perhaps your wayward party. Clark seeming a little lost, and Alwyn sort of headed in the same direction that you are. I'll wave my hand at Clark. Come with me. I think I know where they are. And then I'll look up to Alwyn, spider form on the ceiling, and give a nod that just is like, you're going in the right direction, let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You creep through the library, you enter a chamber where you think you saw a flickering shadow slip in just a moment ago. Can I try and find a place to high up, like on the top of a high bookshelf or something, sneak down and change into symbiotic entity while I'm still high up in the air? You would know you're coming into this room where you think you've cornered them. If you'd like to make any preparations, you can do it before you enter this room. So I'm going to cast Mage Armor before I enter this room. Can I roll stealth for that? Sure, why not? 25. You find the corner of a bookshelf to hide behind as a spider and retake your form, and there are rows of bookshelves stretching several yards towards a central reading area where there are clusters of cushioned furniture strewn around a large table. Cassiel lying on the table, apparently unconscious. The lamps in this room are all dark. The only light comes from small beams of sunlight squeezing through the closed blinds on the eastern wall. And above the central table, you see the figure of Vinzola floating. Vinzola, seeing the other two of you enter, speaks. I am Vinzola. The ancient blood of Zadek flows in my veins. Who are you to attempt to interfere in my design? Let's everyone roll initiative at this point. 17. Dirty 20. Owen, you're up first. You see Vinzola floating, taunting your group from above this table. Yeah. I thought he was floating above. That's why I'm going to jump down and knock his ass to the ground. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll. That's going to be a 24. Roll me an investigation check. Oh. (laughs) There's another nat 20. Okay. Wow. Oh, my God. I I swear to... (laughs) This dice... Has to be weighted. I'm complaining to Wormwood. I mean, don't complain. (laughs) As you leap off this bookshelf, swinging through the air at Vinzola, your weapon passes straight through him. And you think this might be an illusion. Oh my god. Make me an acrobatics check as you land on this table. Yep. There it is. That's 10. Okay. These bookshelves are only 10 feet high. It's not like a great leap. You take no damage. (laughs) Very generous. (laughs) Jeez. Thank you. You're not crossing a ton of distance. The DC for this acrobatics check shouldn't be that high. Anyway, on initiative 20... Not complaining. A lair action happens. Can somebody roll me a d4? Okay. It'll be a four. Okay. Everyone make me a charisma saving throw. God, Is this a charm? Uh, no, it is not. Using the weighted dice. 24. 19. Flat 16. All of you see the bookshelves warble and shift as if they're trying to, like, suck you through them to other parts of this room. What the fuck? But you all manage to stay in place and not be teleported by this effect. And now, can everyone make me some quick perception checks? Four. Dirty 20. What is it? Andy? I'm just going to re-roll it. There's no way. Okay, that's better. I rolled another nat 20, but I'm not fucking taking it. I'm rolling with disadvantage. It's a 17. You don't have to. Like, it's okay. It's okay to be getting a lot of nat 20s. I got another nat 20, guys. I don't know what's going on. Did you change dice? Yes. Wow. Okay. (laughs) At least you weren't rolling like this when you were the dungeon master. Seriously. That's all we can ask for. I'm certainly not rolling like that, because Vinzola only got a 13 on his stealth check, so Illipel and Alwyn are able to pick him out, hiding behind a bookshelf. He's got to be here somewhere. He's hiding behind that bookshelf. When he emerges, he goes after Alwyn. You see him, and 
around him, three swirling duplicates of himself. There are four Vinzolas. Oh, neat. All of them charging at you. And On the start of his turn, can he please make me a constitution save? Yeah, he can. 13. That will just fail. Okay. He takes seven necrotic damage. He takes three necrotic damage, as this vampire seems to be resistant to that sort of energy. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool. And he's going to try and bite you. Uh Uh-oh. And this and this guy looks like a legit ass vampire. Doesn't he does. He? Fuck. Uh, that's a twenty to hit. That hits. Okay. You take five points of piercing damage and seven points of necrotic damage. And could you make me a Constitution saving throw? Here we go. That is not a nat twenty. That is going to be a nine plus three, twelve. These are temporary hit points, right? That you're taking. The five and the seven were all of my temporary hit points. Okay, so that's fine. Your max HP is not going to be reduced because this damage was to temp HP. Okay, cool. So that was what the con save would have been for. And now, Vinzola, teeth in you, grips a hand on the back of your head. Surrender. Surrender your secrets to me. Make an intelligence save. Yeah, I thought so. I assume this is his bonus action to do this. This is his second attack. If they bite you... It's an if hit then sort of thing. Okay, cool. Flat 15. That saves. You are going to take... Oh, wait. Half. Uh, no, I'm proficient in an intelligence save. That's a 17. Cool. You're going to take half of the following psychic damage. Cool. sorry. Sounds like a lot of dice. Uh-oh. Sounds like a lot yeah, of dice. It is. Okay. Ah, that's not too bad. 19, so that would be halved to 9 psychic damage. Okay, good thing I saved. And Vinzola knows your general emotional state. Um, mad. Yeah. Fucking pissed. Your anger unbalances you. I'll be right balanced when I knock you on your ass. Illipel, you are up. Mm. All right. I'm going to dissonant whispers this fucker. Okay. I've seen several vampires in the Orzhov, and a few even in the Demir. Nothing sets you apart. You prattle about in such a display of simplicity. You should be embarrassed. Go ahead and make a wisdom nice. saving throw. Or as I put it on my character sheet, a, sheet, a weasel saving throw. All right. <laughs> Benzola makes a weasel saving throw. They roll a... He rolls a 17. Fuck off. Plus... Four, 21. All right. He will take half damage from this. Yeah, this shit stain will take seven damage. And then he's going to use his reaction. Oh, no. You dare assail my mind. Take you this. He throws a, like, flap of his cloak towards you. From the gold embroidery on it, you see this dagger take shape and fly right at you. Make an intelligence save. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. 15. As this dagger flies at you, you realize that it's only composed of your own anxieties, and it passes through you as you disbelieve this illusion, taking no damage. Hell yeah. You presume me to be an anxious individual. I'm as cool as a cucumber. Yeah. yeah. Clark, we're over to you. All right. Are there still four of him? Yes. So I need to pick one. I roll a d20 to see which one you hit. All right. Don't like those odds. I'm going to shocking grasp him. Okay. Don't want to waste the spell slots in this. It's a 22 to hit, though. All right. I'm going to roll a d4. There are currently four Vinzolas. One is going to be the real him. On any other number, you pop an image. You hit him. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your damage. Got him. That's a five. Five lightning damage, and he can't take reactions. Awesome. You jolt him with this. Ah. Insolent small thing. Your goblin minds taste foul. Alan, we're over to you. It's this one. Not to be a miser, but the odds for mirror image are actually worse. Worse for the caster than a deep. A six or higher, an eight or higher, or an eleven or higher. I'm gonna stick with the D4 method. I think that's just easier. I like your way. It's fun. It reminds okay. me of RPGs. I like that. We can't all have a D100 trigger wish on a fucking NPC. I'm just saying. It's statistically harder for us that way, but that's fine. It's one of the few things that's actually simpler in third edition, and I want to stick with it. Okay, just saying it's harder. I'm making it easier for you, and you're complaining. You're trying to give a nat 20 away, and now you're complaining when I'm making it easier for you. No fighting here. We'll take it. 
The man's lost his mind. That's my Jon Snow. I don't know how to do Jon Snow. <laughs> That's a great Jon Snow, Jeppy. Thanks. I'm going to try and attack him. Okay. That's a uh, 21. All right, I'm going to roll the d4. There are now three Vinzolas. Offhand, try and attack again. Sure. Does a 16 still get there? A 16 will. I'm going to roll a d3. You hit the real Vinzola. Cool. He takes seven bludgeoning and five necrotic. Okay. Looking a little worse for wear. And now, could somebody roll me a d4 as a lair action happens? All right. Go for it, Jimmy. It's a three. Okay. Clork, could you make me an intelligence saving throw, please? Sure. Thirteen. Ah, unfortunately, that does not pass. How many spells do you know? Oh, no. (gasps) Oh, like my spells known column? Yeah. Uh, four. Okay, roll me a d4, please. No. Oh, no. Three. What's the third spell on your list? Witch Bolt. Some of the books on these shelves open up, and tendrils of ectoplasmic blue energy reach out and wrap around your mind, and you... Feel the memory of how to cast glitch bolts being sucked out, and when they retreat back into the books, you no longer remember how to make your glitch bolt happen. That sucks. Uh. Oh, I hope that comes back on a long rest. Holy shit. Uh. Out of character, it does come back on a long rest. Don't tell us that. <laughs> Let us be terrified. <laughs> it's got to come back on a long rest. It has to come back. Come I was on. like, how, who knows greater restoration in this fucking city? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. That's right. I didn't mean to freak you out. This is a low level adventure. <laughs> anyway, Venzola's turn. Please make me a constitution saving Venzola's throw. Venzola's going to make a constitution saving throw. Natural 20. Okay, fine. I can get them too. I can't. Yeah, Andy, you can't be like, okay, fine. You got fucking like eight this game. <laughs> like, yeah. You know literally. what's great? That natural 20 could have been a fight attack. That's fair. That's fair. Let me see if he recharges his mind siphon. He doesn't. So he's just going to bite and claw. Alwyn, you've dealt the most damage. So you are his primary target. Fight attack. Bring it on. 12 doesn't hit. No, it doesn't. See? See? That bite could have been a nat 20. <laughs> Okay, slam attack. An 11 also doesn't hit. No, it doesn't. I just kind of parry with my mallet and quarter staff. I don't think so. Not this time. And he's going to use his movement to try and get away from you. So those engaged in melee can make an attack of opportunity. I can't because I used it on Halo. I can. Okay. I am going to dagger him for the 22 to hit. That will definitely hit. I'm going to roll a d3. That's it. Get him for it. There are now two Vinzolas. As your dagger tears away one of these shadowy images, Vinzola slips behind one of the bookshelves and is going to attempt to hide using his bonus action. Oh my word. I'm going to just tell you, just to speed things along, the DC to find him is now at 26. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. Just gone. <laughs> he slips through these, these shelves that he has wandered many times before and completely leaves your sight. Illipel, you're up. Okay, investigation roll, I suppose, or perception. Okay, yep. 19. Fail. Oh, I can't pass this check. This is literally mathematically impossible. So, do I know generally? You saw the direction he was headed. I just want to cast Fairy Fire in the general area and see if, you know, light sticks to his area. That's a great plan. Uh, it's a 20-foot radius. Pretty likely, if you cast in sort of the direction that he was headed, you might illuminate him. Great. All right, go ahead and pass the shit out of the deck save and make that meaningless. I mean, he's got a plus seven to this, but he rolled a four. He does not. All right, let's light this fucker up. Let's do it. You see a dull twinkle now moving in the shadows. I'm going to say he's going to make all future stealth checks at disadvantage. Conversely, perception checks to find him will have advantage. Oh, has he been located or no? Not precisely because his initial hide was so good. Okay. You think you might have seen the... Oh, so we saw like a plume of light come from like behind a bookshelf. Yeah, but you can't at okay. this moment pinpoint his okay. exact light. I will use my bonus action. Cloak, I believe you're up next. I believe you can locate this foul creature and do what needs to be done. And cast Bardic Inspiration on Clark. Okay, very good. Yeah, Clark is up next. I hope you have good investigation or perception. No, I'm not good enough. I need to roll like a 19. I think that looking for him is a dumb idea, Illipel. Yeah, we don't want to see our targets. If he's fairy-fired, he should be visible. But if that's not the case, then... 
He can't benefit from being invisible, but he's still nat 20 to his stealth check, so very well hidden at the moment. And again, there's sort of obstructions to sight, right? There's a room full of bookshelves. Also, you have advantage. You would have advantage on this because of fairy fire. So you have advantage and bardic inspiration if you choose to look. Oh, it is advantage. Okay. Got it. I might as well just do it. All right. Here we go. Nope. I'm going to save the bardic because I rolled a four and a five. Yeah, you're going to do it. Okay. So I have no idea where he is. I'm going to ready a chaos bolt. I'm just going to point my wrench generally in the direction where I last saw him and wait. Very good. That's Clark. We go to Alwyn. Okay, I'll go ahead and try and make that perception check. It's probably not going to do it either. 24? Very close. Again, you sort of know a general row of books he might be in, but you can't make him out. Cool. I'll cast Entangle. Okay, cool. Makes a dex save. That's a strength save, actually. A strength save? Ah, okay. Oh, dear. He nat 20'd that as well. Cool. It's just a bunch of fucking nat 20s this, this evening. The ground in the area is difficult to rain. There is a lair action now if someone would roll me a... If someone would roll me a, a D... That's a two. Okay, two. Alwyn... Oh, wait, this is randomly determined. Alwyn, roll me an intelligence save. You got it. Twelve. Shadows start to swirl around your vision. You try to blink them out, but they cling to your eyes. When they dissipate, everyone in the room seems to look like Vinzola. Cool, 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 cool. No, 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 what's going on? Some sort of trick. I sort of look about and try and determine reality from illusion. Okay. Vinzola is going to emerge from their hiding place, floating above the ground to avoid this entanglement. And that's my reaction? Yeah, that would trigger your reaction. That's a chaos bolt. And he's also um, still fairy fire. Yes. So you that's roll right. this with so advantage. With advantage. Yeah, I like the first one better. 24. 24 will hit. Okay. I'm going to roll a d2. Oh. There is one Vinzola remaining. Great. I'm going to say roll your damage on this chaos bolt because it could still jump. Okay. It doesn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's uh, 12 psychic damage. Okay. The final illusion dissipates, taking 12 psychic damage as Vinzola hovers towards Zillapel. You try to bring me into the light, but the night's veil is darkness. And he's going to attempt to bite you. Does a 22 hit? Yeah, Scala, it fucking does. Oh, dear. And he recharges his mind siphon. So. Great. Cool. First things first. Oh, there's multiple things to this damage. Cool. You saw Alwyn take this hit in the beginning. That's going to be good. Yeah, I took almost 20, if not for making that save. Okay, you take five points of piercing damage, three points of necrotic damage, make a con save. Here it comes. I'm going to go ahead and guess that a 12 ain't doing it. Your max HP is reduced by three. Now make me an intelligence save as he attempts to reach into your mind and prey upon your fears and anxieties. 18. 18. You're going to take half of this psychic damage as this is still sort of a disconcerting effect. That is a lot of fucking dice. Chill. Cool. Like I said, this one effect would have dealt me 21. This is a boss fight. This is an actual boss fight. Wouldn't it be just like Scala to build a boss that plays just like a fucking Dimir magic deck? <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> I take that as the most sincere compliment you could give me. You take... It's so goddamn annoying. <laughs> I will tell you if it's a compliment after you tell me how much fucking damage I'm about to take. You take 13 psychic damage. That's the halved value? That's halved from 27. Wow. Billapel is on one knee trying to fucking rally. Not looking good. Okay. Well, rally because it's your turn. I'm fucking attacking this shit. Yeah. So do I basically see a glowing vampire attacking a another vampire who kind of takes a knee. I see them moving. Yeah, you would see them fighting. Illipel, actually make me a concentration check. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Concentration check? You gotta beat it 10. Oh, I did. Yeah, okay. It was a, it was a okay, you maintain concentration on your fairy fight. So yes, you would see one of them light up. So I roll, I roll with advantage? You roll with advantage. So I already rolled once. It wasn't great. Uh, my second roll was a little bit better. My first roll was a two. My second was a 20. On the dice. There it is. Naturally. Oh, yeah. yeah. As this vampire has its teeth sunk into your neck. Yeah, go ahead and, and roll your crit. Stab it in the face. 
uh, 14 piercing damage. Nice. As this vampire bites me and then reels back, I take my rapier and just right through both of his cheeks, through the side of his face, jab into him, and then like pull him into me and pull it back out. Do some nasty damage on his face, leaving some permanent scars. You wrench your blade right through this guy's face. If he weren't undead, he would be a mess of a corpse. Through his broken jaw, you can hear these sounds uttering. I see I am not the only one with fangs. Clark, you're up. All right. It's going to be a chaos bolt. He still got fairy fire up? Uh, yeah, so this is an advantage. All right. And you got your bardic. That's true. I should take the bardic. 21's gonna hit. Absolutely will. It was dicey before that. It was <laughs> dicey, indeed. Ew. Yes. All right, so here's the chaos bolt. That's a really bad roll. That's uh, that's four acid damage. Four acid damage. The hem of his cloak sizzles a little, and he's going to use his reaction. Could you make me an intelligence save? Damn. Oh. 18. Again. This dagger materializes out of his cloak and shoots towards you, but you manage to disbelieve it. It passes through your body with no effect. We are back to okay. And no, and I'm going to use my meta magic to cast another chaos bolt as a bonus. Action. Ah, very Holy nice. Shit. Quickening there your it spell. Is. At second level, because why not? Spicy. Here we go. At least somebody's got second level spells for this fucking fight. You're kidding me. Nope. Still with advantage. Yeah, I rolled a three and a five. Fuck. Oh, jeez. No. I think the chaos gods know you're casting chaos bolts. Yeah. And they, like, have to reach in and meddle. Fuck these chaos gods. It's because I put in writing in Clark's backstory, Clark's luck has run out. <laughs> Fucking tell me. That's it. I should just start lying. Yeah, the chaos bolts ricochets into a bookshelf. Ineffective. Alwyn, we're back to you. Damn. Do you want to make him some sort of roll to know that the fairy-fired version of him is him? I was going to make it like a percentile chance was how I had it, but with the fairy-fire... I mean, he's fairy-fired. Yeah, he's fairy-fired. So I'm going to say it's still a percentile chance, but the percentile chance of attacking the wrong person is down. Oh, okay, cool. I'm not going to make a melee attack. I'm going to stay far away because I'm still a little delirious here. So in a haze of this effect... I look to my Golgari amulet, and from it, I begin conjuring a sickening green energy, and you see I whip my mallet in the air towards him, and with a lash of this energy, I'm going to cast Ray of Sickness. Yeah, using the Golgari locket, I'm going to roll these D percent. You do indeed attack the correct target. 25 to hit. Absolutely hits. So... That's going to be five poison damage, but I also need you to make another con save, please. Okay. It's another nat 20, I'm afraid. All right, fuck off. I would roll a nat 20. I don't even think I know what happens. Uh, he would have been poisoned. Yeah, would have had disadvantage on stuff. Yeah, disadvantage on all attacks and ability checks. One more lair action. Somebody roll me a d4. Am I still under this effect at the end of my turn? Actually, yeah, make me an intelligence save at the end of your turn. 16. Yeah, you shake it off. You n- now see your companions and Vinzola as they truly are. Oh, glad to be out of that. Somebody roll me a d4. Jeffy, it's you again. Two. Illipel, this time you make me an intelligence saving throw. Here we go again. Okay, all right. 16. Yeah, you sort of, your eyesight becomes cloudy. You begin to see everyone take on the appearance of Vinzola, but you're able to wipe the effect from your mind and your eyes with this saving throw. Now it is Vinzola's turn. Oh, I should have healed Illipel. God damn it. Vinzola is going to bite at you, Illipel, after you dealt him that devastating blow. Naturally. If you turn them into a vampire, I swear to fucking God. Does a 20 hit? Yeah, it hits. Why would a 20 not hit? <laughs> like you gotta even ask. Okay. Does a 38 hit you, bard? Okay, seven <laughs> piercing damage. I'm done. You're unconscious? I'm okay. out. Okay. No. You additionally take... This is not gonna cause a, a death save. This is part of the same effect. But you also would have taken five necrotic damage. It's relevant because he heals some of that damage from drinking your blood. He's going to move towards, I guess... Alwyn and make a claw attack against you. Cool. Does a 17 hit? 
Yeah, for sure. Okay. They hit you with their claw, dealing seven points of bludgeoning damage, and their arm sort of wraps around you and grabs hold of you, and you are going to be grappled. Wow, it just happens on a hit. Yes, it just happens on a hit. It's like one of those creature abilities. And now it is Illipel's turn. Illipel, make a death saving throw. Four. A four? Okay. Illipel, one death save closer to dying. Clark, you're up. I'm going to use the health potion that I still have from session one on Illipel. Excellent. I go over and I just kind of feed it into Illipel's mouth. Yeah, this was a gift from Ralzeric. This is going to be 44 plus 4. All right. 44. 44. 3. Oh, there's one. Better than 43. Yeah. Just ignore it. Just keep going. And yeah, just keep just ignoring it. <laughs> 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 All right. So I kind of pour this health potion into Illipel's mouth, and they heal for 12 points. 12 points. Illipel, you feel suddenly rejuvenated. Back in the fray. Back in the fray. All right. Clark, any bonus actions? Yeah, why don't I use my, my movements and my bonus action to get away from Illipel and hide. Okay. Cool. Ooh, get away from me. Like, I'm terrible. Get away from you. Roll your stealth. Uh, okay. 17. Did Illipel say anything when Clark? It sounded like they said back in the fray. Oh, okay. I should have said thank you, where are my manners, but I didn't, so you have every right to get away from me. All right. All right, we go now to Alwyn, who is caught in the devious claws of this Dimir vampire. Get your devious claws off me. <laughs> um, I'm just going to try and hit him. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, an 18? 18 will hit. So, 10 bludgeoning and 6 necrotic, which would be half, I guess. Here's the second swing with the quarterstaff. 15. 15. This is armor class. Fuck yeah. There we go. Uh, for another 6 bludgeoning and 5 necrotic. Half. As you lay into this vampire that has you wrapped in his arms, poised to bite, why don't you uh, add some flourish to your killing blow? Oh, shit. I just stare them cold and piercing eyes in my symbiotic entity. They flare green. You should think better of the Gogari, and you should know that to get so close is your end. It's time for you to take the step from life into death. Foul beast! I smash their head in with my quarterstaff. You stave this vampire's head in, the cracks forming in its facade, spider web down its entire body, and it crumbles into a pile of dust, leaving only its cloak behind. And we'll exit initiative. I want to go to Cassiel as soon as we're able. They're lying unconscious on the table, a pair of bite marks in their neck. Can I kind of, like, see if I can shake them awake or see if they're going to be okay at all? I make a medicine check. Cool. Jeez, okay. 22. Yeah, you managed to nurse them back to consciousness. Oh. Are you with us? You, the guilt-packed agents. Aye. Where am I? What happened? Why is there a disc stuck to my foot? What? The frisbee. Oh, right. Oh, the disc. <laughs> I thought he said dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't say dick. That's an inconsequential detail. But unfortunately, you were under the thrall of a rather foul individual. We've taken the liberty of disposing of this creature, and your memory may be a bit hazy, but I'm hoping you could help us understand a few things. I will try. Illipel, we should take him to someone who might be able to restore the memory. Yes. I don't think there'll be much more help until then. Yes, yes, that was what we were talking about before I... before I forgot. It's okay. It's all right. You're all right now. Thank you. You were going to take me to the fire mind. I look back to Clark. We were? We were serious about that? You work for him, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. If not the great dragon himself, someone, one of his agents, somebody's gotta know what to do, how to do it. Yeah, one of his agents. That'll work. Clark is gonna take a little bit of the vampire dust. Cool. He'll produce a vial from his tool belt. I'll give Clark an assist if he wants to make any kind of check. I'll give him a help action. I would say this could probably require an arcana check to get a usable reagent. And I also want to take a look at that cloak if that's still around. Yeah, it's all that remains of Vinzola. Cool. That's a 15 arcana. Okay. 
You gather some vampire dust. Its usefulness yet to be determined. I put it back in my tool belt. Awesome. And the cloak? Are you doing anything beyond, like, a cursory examination? I'll look at it. If we're kind of taking a second here to get our bearings, I'll ritually cast Detect Magic on it. Yeah, sure. It is magical. Roll me Arcana to know more. The uh, schools are illusion and abjuration. Okay, okay. Flat 19. 19. In the Undercity, you may have heard of these items traded. They're popular among sort of demir cell leaders, and these are called a cloak of daggers. Mmm. Ah, hence the dagger. Very nice. Also a pretty clever pun, I have to say. Or wordplay, at least. Yeah, this is a cloak of daggers. It can be used to make people who attack you think that they are being stabbed. I sort of look at it. It's general mise <laughs> I look up to Illipel. Once again, Illipel, you fought well and bravely. I'm glad for Cloak healing you up in time. I think you've earned it. And I give the cloak to Illipel. Cool. It looks very fetching on you. This long, dark leather cloak, its edges with this fine gold trim. Ah, well, not only functional, but fashionable. I thought you'd say as much. The perfect kind of item. I am deeply in your debt. I cannot thank you enough. The closest thing I'd have to repaying this would be... Illipel will take out one of their more enjoyed but not quite favorite perfumes and offer a spritz to Alwyn. <laughs> I kind of hold my hand out and in, in, in sort of a sort of a stopping motion and say, That's quite all right. Some smells go down to your bones. Are you sure this one is made with hints of balsam and apricot? It is quite a lovely bouquet. I shudder at the thought. <laughs> There's no need. I insist. Save it for yourself. Very well. Thank you again, friend. We should get out of here. Yes, and I should thank all of you for rescuing me from the thrall of that creature. Let us make our way to the chamber of the Guild Pact. I don't want to forget about this, but we also have the fairy. <laughs> I carried them on my back as a spider all the way to the library. Yeah. I'm going to roll something real Go ahead and roll. I, cause, uh, and, and we can do this retroactively or not, but basically I would have dropped them on top of the bookshelf that I stealthed on. Yeah. I would go back and check to see if they got away or not. This library is something of a hub of Demir activity. They might have been able to slip away in the chaos, but you go to the body. Go ahead and make me a medicine check. Oh, shit. 20. They're dead. Fuck. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he just threw it on a bookshelf and left it there and it died. We were in combat! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. It's not like you fight a vampire with a fairy under my arm the whole time. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah, you, you find the fairy dead. Uh, Seven hills, Ned! <laughs> different Game of Thrones character. And you depart the library. Back onto the streets of Precinct 5. All right, Precinct 5. We need to get back to the Guild Pact. Yeah, I'll catch our bearings and see if I can steer us there pretty quick. Go ahead and roll me either Perception or Survival. Great. That's going to be only a 12. Hey! Hey, it's you guys! You want to take Gorp and Zorp's oh, taxi God. service again? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my Lord. You know, Gorp and Zorp really came through for us last time. Hey, we got you and the vehicle to your destination in one piece. That's more than we promised. That's right. Vehicle's a piece of junk, but, you know, it works. Functional junk, that's what we call it. Functional junk. That's goblin engineering for That's you. right, buddy. Come on. These fucking guys. All right. What did we charge you last time? 50 zibs? And that was at a discount. Your return customers will give you the same 50 zib rate. I'll pay 50 zibs to support an honest goblin-owned business. You are goblin-owned, right? Yeah, goblin-owned, goblin-operated, goblin, um, goblin technology acquired by goblins. That's all I can tell you. I know. You know, some people don't trust goblin technology. Can't imagine why. Do I trust them? <laughs> all right, I give him 50 zibs. Okay, get yeah. In. Their rickety wagon on top of an engine rolls through the streets of Ravnica, down through the dirty 6th precinct, where the reconstruction has barely happened at all. There are like a bunch of sooty urchins running through the streets here that Corp and Zorp have to yell at. Hey! Hey, quit playing stickball! Move! Quit playing with those dang discs! We got passengers! <laughs> Can. 
Eventually, you take a bridge over the Dead Bridge Gorge, the largest main pathway into the Undercity. Alwyn, you would be familiar with this spot. I look down and I just kind of mumble to myself. I'll be back soon. Don't you worry. What was that? Just thinking to myself. Uh, I ought to pay me home a visit soon. Home? They could have some useful information about this. And on the other side of this bridge, like night and day, you pass from this this war-torn industrial precinct into the opulent first precinct, where the great spires of the Cathedral of Orjova loom large, and all of the buildings have been by magic sort of reconstituted into their former opulent bearing. And you roll through this to the outside of the Chamber of the Guild Pacts, perhaps getting some odd looks from other commuters as you go, this cart sputtering noisily through the street, and you arrive at the Chamber of the Guild Pact. Well, Clork, you are leading our merry band. Don't forget it. After you. And I lead. All right. Well, that was certainly a journey, but uh, we, we did make it here intact. Yeah, and the cart made it here intact, too. Don't you forget it. Go up in Zorps. Tell your friends. Thanks again, fellas. All right, I'll see you around. If you're in the fifth and you need a ride, that's where we camp out. All right. I just kind of take note of their ridiculous finger guns. <laughs> their contraption putters away, and you enter the chamber of the guild pact, where you see the ancient dragon who shares the title presiding over an audience of petitioners in this central chamber. His golden oh, scales glittering in the kaleidoscopic light pouring through the stained glass window. Clork immediately prostrates himself before he just like down on his knees, hands like just bowing before. Great. You step right into the room and fall down. I sort of nudge Clork. Like I, I kind of kick him on his leg a little bit. We've only just walked through the door. Get up. The person who is petitioning now appears to be an Orzhov diplomat by their garb, black and white with icons of the Orzhov's son. They bow low and say, Most eminent Firemind, we have exhausted every legal option at our disposal. You are the only one who can restore order at Plaza Central. Surely the Conclave has had time enough to mourn? You sort of hear a grumble as the Firemind crouches low <sighs> to speak directly to this to this petitioner. <gasps> Time enough! Time enough! <laughs> you impudent <laughs> well! You would have barely scraped out a century at the time of your life's expiration, yet you summon the audacity to exhort me on the subject of time? Fifteen thousand years I have passed in this world, and that tree was lofty long before them. I flitted through its eaves as a fledgling, yet you, arrogant ape, would hope to persuade me that such a life could be properly memorialized in such an infinitesimal span of weeks. Vizu Gazi will not be commemorated in any measure of time comprehensible to you. Generations of your bloodline may live and die before a suitable dirge could be fully incanted. I start clapping from the back of the room. But your honor, the infrastructure and economic disruption is too substantial. It is too substantial to be sustained. The law states, the law states that such an assembly is protected under the rights regarding free religious expression. You certainly wouldn't want a precedent set where those rights might be frivolously overturned, would you? And he snorts and a great puff of smoke fills the area around him. Of course not. You have threaded the line between Gandalf and fucking <laughs> Professor Farnsworth so perfectly. Thanks, that's what I was going for. <laughs> of course not, Your Honor. Then remove your spurious suit from my presence and be grateful that my reincarnation has granted me the patience to endure your pretension without incinerating you. In fact, all of you get out. My minions have returned. I should like to speak to them. He says, turning his large head towards the oh, entrance shit. where you have come in. And the audience of petitioners murmurs a bit and files into other chambers. Seek look. Looks like we will be talking to him. Clark lifts up his head 
and slowly gets up and approaches this huge dragon. I don't prostrate myself, but I definitely give like a swarm s- salute and nod. He idly beckons you with a claw. Come, minions! Oh, no, such an antiquated term. Old habits truly are most dreadful adversaries. I don't mind being called a minion. Don't worry about me. Call us drones down in the Undercity. This new position requires that I be more considerate of, how shall I put this, beings with perspectives different from my own, limited as they may be. I have been following idly your exploits, my minions come. I trust you are indeed of my aid. That's right. Illustrious Firemind, I stand before you but a humble minion. We need of you, uh, uh, we have here, uh, this person here has had his memory wiped, and we believe that they are the one who took your sun disc. Mm. Yes, but not acting of their own volition. So that's why we need you to restore their memory so that we can get to the bottom of what happened that night. Would you do us this honor? Bring forth the subject! I gesture to Alwyn. I look to Cassiel and I say, You've come this far with us. I hope you trust us. Cassiel turns to you. It's hard to tell if they're sweating with their amphibious skin, uh, but they look a little nervous. They gingerly step forward. What they say, I, I believe to be the truth. There were great portions of my memory missing. We were attacked by several Dimir agents. Oh, great dragon. Oh, uh, yes. The House of Secrets ever with their surreptitious schemes. I shall see what I can unravel. And puts forward a long claw, probably about your whole height, Clark, and taps the nail gingerly to Cassiel's chest. And it begins to glow and crackle with magical energy in this same sort of kaleidoscopic light of many colors as it wraps around their body. Their eyes go white and then begin to glow. Nivnizit concentrates for a moment and then takes the claw away. Ah, yes, these memories have been encoded with a experiential cipher, a most intricate Demir art known to Zardek's brood. It would take a lifetime to learn how to interpret and unravel these signifiers. But fortunately for you, I have lived many hundreds of lifetimes. I should be able to decrypt this cipher in uh, a week or two. He name dropped somebody. I assume that's the Demir Guildmaster right now. No. So Zadek, what's everyone's passive history? 11, 10, 13. Zadek was an ancient vampire. He spawned the line of mind drinkers, the type of vampire that you just fought. And he was killed about 70 some years ago when he managed to dissolve the guild pact requiring the sort of fallback state that you're in now where there's a living guild pact Aye, we fought a vampire one named Vinzola does this mean anything? does this mean anything? great one oh, the Demir agents of many names they change them so frequently it's impossible to keep up with even for an intellect as prodigious as mine they only have so much space for names two weeks then Amazing he can do it that fast. We are in the presence of a master, after all. I accept your flattery most humbly. I am attempting to be more humble. Once you die, you begin to observe your surroundings in a different light. Even small things such as you remind me that life is precious. Not all have the same luxury that I do of having it be so voluminous. Well done, minions. You may depart. I have many other matters to attend to. Content yourselves with what business you will, and when the cipher is decrypted, I shall summons you again, as I did before. Ah, I just said minions again, didn't I? Blast! Old habits. No, no, it's okay. We are your minions. Thank you, great fire mind. We are eternally grateful. Just give another discreet bow and start pushing Clark out of the room. 
niv gestures a claw for you to depart as you leave and points down another corridor for Cassiel to go, and they sort of walk down that way. And now you're going to have two weeks of downtime before the next sort of leg of this adventure. Just, just A plus character acting. God damn. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Oh, thank you guys. I was was looking forward to that guy. You were rather starstruck in there. I mean, it's the fire mind. You weren't starstruck? In fact, Dillapel, I'd say you were awfully quiet. Ah, you've got me there. I suppose I felt no need to continue gushing over this individual. Cloak had that down for the rest of us in spades. That's how I was taught. I just kind of narrow my eyes towards Illipel a little. They didn't make you say the pledge to niv every morning in school when you were growing up? School and I had a precarious relationship. Mm. That being said, I suppose I'm just maybe a little, lack of a better word, grouchy. Sad to be leaving you two for two weeks. I've been having such a splendid time with the two of you. Oh. Well, Illipel, are you suggesting we should part ways? You'd mentioned you'd wanted to go visit home. Is that true? I haven't shaken the thought ever since we met that Gorgon Lona. That's not to say you couldn't travel with me. Illipel, you've been there already once. You know it's not that far into the Undercity. Yeah. You said it yourself. Several times over, we fight well together. All three of us. Hold on. Hold. This is a lot. <laughs> Hold on. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> I need to think about this. This is what happens when you make these jaded antisocial characters. I mean, my, I would argue that Illipel is anything but antisocial. They're just social on their terms. <laughs> I would say they're antisocial in an extroverted way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Illipel is moving around in their nice new cloak. I certainly do owe you a favor or two. How long is your business expected to take? I can't say for sure. Perhaps we start elsewhere first. You could uh, come with me to Nivix and read up a little on the sun disc. You know, do a little brush up, a little review. Because we all know what a sun disc is, right? I thought you were an expert on the subject. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. A little brush up, as you say. Spending valuable time relearning a subject you're well equipped to handle. Peculiar use of time, I might say. Well, there's always more to learn. I just kind of give a side eye to Illipel. What was the insight roll there, Andy? You roll the die. I'm guessing it was insight. Oh, it was insight. Yeah, it was a dirty 20. <laughs> um, Illipel will raise their eyebrows like, yeah, I know. I know. I know. Dirty 20. You can try to oppose that, Clark. No, that was only a seven. Clark at this point is just keeping up appearances. He knows he hasn't actually doled out enough information about a sun disc to convince them that he knows what it is. We both know. We I'm both gonna, I'm gonna know. Throw, I'm going to throw Clark a rope and be like, I'm not one to bemoan the pursuit of extra information. It is, after all, one of the most valuable commodities in Ravnica. That being said, I suspect that our business with the sun disc for now is at a temporary close. We've resolved the main issue at hand and simply maybe have to recover it next. I don't know what to say, Clark. I'm not sure I can follow you in the pursuit of this knowledge. I do not find it to be exceptionally valuable at this time. Alwyn, on the other hand, you. I'll follow you. I cannot promise I will stay for the length of these two weeks, if you'd be so kind. Would you be willing to wait for me outside of Orjova? And then, I suspect we could handle matters in the Undercity uninterrupted. I look down to Clark. What do you say, Clark? Yeah, sounds good to me. Very well. To Orjova, then. Lead the way. All right. You guys are headed into a couple weeks of downtime, taking care of some personal business before you're able to take another action finding the sun disk. And you decide that your first stop during this downtime is going to be the Great Cathedral of Orjova. And that seems like a good place to end the session. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato, that's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris 
for $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.